Good evening, Master. Good evening to all our friends, beings of light who are here. Today, in response to requests, we are going to talk about what happens while the human being is in his disconnected state during sleep. We, spirits of light, are here to guide you all and this request to explain this subject came to us. What happens when the human being is sleeping during his deepest state of sleep? We can say that actions depend a lot from human being to human being. It must be said that in most human beings, absolutely nothing happens. The human being unfolds, shuts down, so to speak, and nothing happens. Obviously, we have human beings with a greater sensitivity or a greater disposition so that we, spirits of light, can use their energies to carry out work on the spiritual plane, on the astral plane. As already said, due to the different energetic spectrums existing on the astral plane, we beings of light are unable to reach all the ranges we are not allowed to enter, or rather, it is not that it is not allowed, but for energy reasons, we are unable to reach certain frequency ranges. Therefore, we need the help of human beings to work in these areas where we are unable to take any action. To exemplify, we can mention cases in which it is necessary to rescue some being from the astral plane. So, we need a denser energy that can enter these areas to remove these beings from these denser planes up to frequency ranges where we can act and continue on with the rescue of these beings. In the case of very special beings as our friend Chano and our great master Tanaka, we were able to use their energies in full awareness. In other words, we use not only energy, but also consciousness. For very special jobs, we need these two areas, human consciousness and energy. Sometimes it is necessary to explain or convince the being of the astral world to leave this environment and take him or her to less dense areas of the astral plane itself so that we beings of light can act and then, yes, take him or her to the spiritual plane. However, in some situations, let's say, more frequent, we only need the energy of the human being and we are then able to manipulate the energy of the human being to bring the being from the astral plane to areas of higher energetic frequency. These cases we call astral unfolding. Therefore, the person in the great majority of times, is unconscious, is unfolded, as we used to say. And we simply use the energy of this being as a vehicle to transport beings from the astral plane. In these cases, most of the time, these human beings do not remember anything at all. There is no awareness in these actions. No part of human conscious is used in these actions. Therefore, thousands upon thousands of human beings are used for these efforts to rescue beings 
from the astral world. The question that remains is, why rescue the beings of the astral world? For this question, it is important to mention that certainly each of the beings that are in the astral plane are in their energetic range due to the law of action and reaction. In other words, the actions performed by these human beings when they lived on the material plane are the reasons why they were taken to the astral plane. On top of that, the more serious the action committed by the human being on that material plane, the denser the place he will find himself after disincarnating, the lowest the energy frequency will be. As an example, we can mention that human beings who commit suicide stay in places where the energy frequency is extremely low. By the way, suicide, as we have said earlier, is dreadful. Taking the life given by God or by Christ's consciousness is an extremely condemnable act and it is punished by the law of action and reaction with the continuation of your life in places of extremely dense energies. Just like a suicidal action, other actions such as murder, taking other people's lives, either in a violent way, immediately extracting the life of another human being or through actions that indirectly cause the death of another human being are also punished and these human beings are taken to places of significantly low density. When we mention the indirect death of human beings, we have several examples to give. Medical negligence or the negligence of a politician who diverts funds for his own benefit and leave the health system in a deficit, indirectly causing the death of several people. The words of a religious leader who embed in the minds of his followers that death is a path to happiness, indirectly causing the death of people. Therefore, several examples can be mentioned in this same line of reasoning. I think that it is truly clear to everyone. Although, however cruel someone's action on the material plane may have been, God's mercy will always exist, and even these people, evidently after a long period of penance, even these people are given a second chance to redeem themselves for their actions. Thus, after the period defined by the Christ consciousness, let's say, for punishment, these beings are transferred to less dense areas where they will receive due treatment, where they will receive the necessary instructions. In their own time, they are given a new chance to be reborn, to live a new experience on the material plane and gradually obtain their spiritual elevation. That is why even these beings who live on extremely dense energy planes in their own time are rescued and treated. As we said earlier, for the rescuing of these beings, in these cases, we use the energy of human beings. Both our friend Chano and our master Tanaka have already witnessed and participated in several rescuing sessions 
and I am sure they have learned a lot from these actions and have certainly promoted their spiritual evolution. We can say that all human beings who participate directly or indirectly in these rescues also, by law of action and reaction, end up rising spiritually. They end up climbing steps in the spiritual world. Master Tanaka, I think we were clear on the message. So I believe that we can end our session with this vast material that was assimilated today. I'm sure that you, as always, will do a great job transcribing these words of ours to reach the greatest number of people, the greatest number of people possible. So be it. Thank God. Thank you very much for the presence of all of you spirits of light who increasingly reinforce our commitment to this work. Many thanks to Master Tanaka and Mr. Channel for making their energies available for our session. I thank you all and wish you a good week.